<clears throat> Hello everyone, it's me, KP. I'm here in my studio, The Moon and the Maker, and we're getting ready for World Watercolor Month, day five. Oh my goodness, I can't believe it's been five days already. So we still have about three more minutes before we get started, but I wanted to go ahead and start the live stream to give everybody a chance to find me. I know that we have switched it. Um, the first few days were held on Facebook, and we've been having so much trouble with Facebook that we went ahead and switched over here to YouTube. I hope that you can all find me and that you jump in to get Makey with me for World Watercolor Month. So I'm just going to give it a few more minutes, continue getting my things together, and then we'll get started. All right, so it looks like the clock's just about to turn out to 11, and we're going to go ahead and get started doing a little splashing of our stamps. As you may or may not know, I'm KP, and I'm here in my studio, the Moon and the Maker headquarters of Rubber Moon Art Stamps. So we love to watercolor, and we also love stamps around here. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get started today. I'm going to be using the same materials I've been using every other day. We're using 300 pound cold press watercolor paper and I have this cut to a three by four size. Just a real small, simple, manageable format. And um, I am using Fluid Brand paper. It looks like this. And today I'm going to be using one of Mindy Lacefield's stamps. I don't know if you can see it very well, but there she is. Um, and of course, I can't remember the name of this girl, but she's uh, one of Mindy Lacefield's darling girls with the umbrella. I think it's Girl in Galoshes. Yep, that's it. <laughs> oh, hey, Dana. Um, and I'm also going to be using her little... Um, raindrop stamp and then a little I'm gonna go ahead and put a saying on this one I think and it just says sprinkle magic um I just had the urge to stamp that on there when I was finishing up my little sample we're gonna do this one pretty quickly same you know techniques that I've been using again same materials I have my number eight and my number four long round brushes here I have my watercolor squeezed out in my little pat my little porcelain palette here um I am using core watercolor by Golden, this brand in the tube, and then I also have this little half pan set as well with just some basic classic colors. Um, again, I am going to stamp this girl using a real pale color. You could use something like a very light, light gray, or you could use um, even a very thin wash of a burnt sienna. <clears throat> I think I'm going to go ahead and use that pale pink that I 
shared with you the other day. Again, getting my flat wash brush and not a lot of water on my brush. I just wanna give enough paint right on the stamp. To um, ink it up. I know it's not ink, we're going to paint it up, but you want a nice coverage and nothing that's too wet. All right, I got a really nice, a nice stamping on that one. So I'm going to have to let it dry just for a second. And while I do that, I'll go ahead and stamp some of my raindrops. So for those of you who don't use a lot of stamps, um, I'm going to go ahead and just explain this really quickly because I know uh, many of you do stamp, but some people might not. And so I want to just share with you, these are um, on a gray cushion. It's called cling foam. Um, it is not sticky, okay? This is actually like a static cling. It will cling to things like acrylic, plastic. It does not cling to wood. Again, it's not sticky. You wanna try your best to keep the oils off of your fingers. Uh, you know, uh, you want to try your best to keep this back part clean and not get a lot of oils off of your fingers onto it because eventually it will not cling anymore. If it starts to become not clingy, then you can just um, dampen it, clean it with a sort of a moist uh, paper towel or a baby wipe or something like that. Um, then you can still store these back in on the original cling that it comes on or you can store them just flat. Um, the main thing is, is that you don't want to do anything that will degrade this cling because you want it to stay nice for your stamping surface. I know this is watercolor, but I just thought I would mention that for those of you who may be, you know, even new to, I've had some people that have stamped for a long time, but they usually always bought wood mounted, so they weren't really sure about the cling. So I hope that is helpful to you. And again, I'm using this light gray. And I'm just going to stamp a few of the raindrops right there in the corner. And then I'm just going to go to town with my watercolors. Here you can see the sample I did. Again, sort of making all of the outline, that pink outline, will recede as we bring in color. And even if little bits of it peek through, I think that's okay too. It, um, it just gives a completely different look to your stamp. And again, this sort of... I think um, a nice way to start your watercolor journey, if you haven't watercolored a lot, sometimes stamping your under layers will really help, you know, make you more comfortable and, and less intimidated if you feel that way sometimes. I think we all do. I think there's something about making our first marks on a nice, fresh piece of paper that can be a little intimidating sometimes, but I just want you to remember that it's only paper, so... Every mistake that you made just leads to your next discovery, I, I hope. Um, I found that to be true for me, so I hope it's true for you too. I'm going to go into her face with some fresh, clean water and just sort of pull a little bit of that color through, just the tiniest bit. I'm not trying to make her face pink. I just want to sort of tinge it a little bit. And you know, when you wet the surface of your watercolor paper for the first time, it does something that like opens the pores of the paper. It makes your paint um, easier to manipulate on the surface. So if you moisten your paper just a little bit, that will help to spread your watercolor around and make it so that, you know, like if I hit this paper with pigment, First, that you know, with paint straight away and it's not wet, it is going to be harder to move around than if I give it a little layer of water first. I'm going in here with some burnt sienna, and honestly, I'm not sure what color of burnt sienna because I have a few different ones. I did some testing of different brands of burnt sienna, I think I did some. Holbein, and I did some Core, and I did some um, Da Vinci, and I think some Winsor Newton. And I put out four different, different not shades. They were all burnt sienna, 
And I put all four of them down to see which one that I liked the most for skin tones. And um, then they all got mixed together. <laughs> so I like them all, but um, I do like the core, the core uh, raw, or I'm sorry, burnt sand and natural. And then I also do really like the Windsor Newton. It's one thing <clears throat> if you get to where you love watercolors and you, um, you know, start to experiment with different brands. Um, it's sort of nice to find a couple brands that you love and then get the same color within those brands because it really there really is a difference. So now I'm going to go ahead and just paint in all the areas that would be her skin. So her arms and her little legs, just real quickly. All right, so obviously all her face needs to dry now. So I'm going to sort of avoid that area. I don't wanna go in and try to do any of that detail work yet. Otherwise I'll lose it all. And I want to make her hair teal. So I'm going to go right over all that pink. And this teal color is pretty opaque, so it'll give a nice coverage. Um, and any little bits of the pink that poke through will just add to the whole shading of the piece and sort of do a lot of the work for you. Another nice thing about painting your stamps. But of course, I, I want you to keep in mind too, as you're doing this sort of thing, that if you wanted to paint, like if you don't want to stamp, if you just wanted to go in and watercolor, you could do the same exact thing because you could paint your base layers with a color and then go over and, you know, layer on other colors over the top of whatever you base layered with. I'm just going to go in and continue painting areas that I want to sort of get filled in and still avoiding that face so that I can go back and paint details later. Going in a little green here. A little bit of green that I made using, um, I don't know, just a green that I had in my palette mixed with a little bit of that cobalt, uh, cobalt teal. I hope everyone had a nice 4th of July and 
you got a nice day of, um, I don't know, family and relaxation, hopefully. That's pretty much all we did was hang out together. We didn't really do much. I worked in the studio some, and it was pretty nice. Felt like a holiday, so that's always nice. All right, so she's pretty much filled in. And now, you know, she has her base layer, so I can now go over and, and start to add little details, like just some extra color in her umbrella and uh, maybe some other little patterns on her shirt and things like that. I'm going to go ahead and continue to leave that while I work the background a little bit. <clears throat> and I'm going to take that same gray that I stamped the um, raindrops in, and I'm just going to go... Right, and I am using a pretty wet brush and a lot of pigment to just sort of smear it around. And I'm going right up to the outlines of my raindrops and I'm gonna to try to match the value, match the value of the outline so that they don't necessarily look stamped. And I am leaving um, the inside of the raindrop. I'm leaving that not painted. And remember, especially when you're working small like this, you can always Turn the paper if it makes it easier for you. Again, sort of not going right up to her, leaving a little bit of saved whites around the outline of the body. And it's not imperative that you do that, but it's just something I think I've sort of gotten the habit of doing. And um, I like the look, so. And you can, of course, finesse it as much as you need to if you want to get your little outlines smooth. And your little areas of transition. You can always stitch them together. All right, now our background's pretty much done. I can go back later and add things to that if I want to, but I'm gonna take just the slightest little wash of this teal again. And sort of highlight my little raindrops. And super subtle, not exactly you know, make a huge, huge difference, but it's just those little touches sometimes that, that actually do take a painting from, you know, like, ah, pretty cute to, ooh, wow. <laughs> and you can't really see it that much, but, but it's there. And I'm gonna darken up some areas in our hair a little bit more. And I, I feel like now I can go into her face and start doing a little bit of the detail.
All right, I'm using a Payne's Gray. Remember, I said, I've said this before, so I know I'm repeating myself. I really like to use a Payne's Gray a lot of times instead of black. And this is where I'm going to add the detail to her eyes. And I'm using my, my number four brush. And I'm just blotting that a little bit because um, my hand was dragging through it. It was a little bit wet, so. All right, so what I did was I gave her her little eyeliner across the top a couple little sort of half circles for her eyes, her pupils, two very tiny dots for the darkest part of her nose where her nostrils are, and then a line across her mouth where her lips meet, and then I'll go in, um, again, uh, alizarin crimson or the quinacridone to make a great lip color. I don't know if you can see this. There's a really tiny, this was actually part of the stamp. It's the little under part of her lip. And it's, you know, it's the way Mindy Lacefield draws. She draws in sort of a sketchy style that has some imperfections, if you will, but I love it. But you can also sort of manipulate that out if you want to make it less obvious. And then I could go in and add just another little touch of my burnt sienna there. And then, of course, some more finessing. I want to give her some rosy cheeks. So I've laid down some water where my, my alizarin crimson can just sort of spread around in there because I don't want it super dark and obvious. I just want nice little, I don't want her to have rosacea. <laughs> I just want her to have rosy cheeks. So we're going to just continue to water it down until I get the translucency that I want. And then again, you can kind of do the same things if you want to give a little shading above the eyes for her eyelid. I'm again going in with a darker shade of burnt sienna there. Give her some eyelids. And then if you see a little bit of pink in the eye and you want to sort of, you know, manipulate that out, again, you could use your titanium white or a little bit of white gouache. And just keep adding little washes and layers of paint as you like till you can get her just the way you want her. And I'll go in and give a little bit of darker shading maybe to her top and maybe put in a little pattern. This is where you can add your own touches and do whatever you want. You want plaid, you want polka dots, whatever you want. I like my flowers on the other one better, but you get the idea. If you don't like it, just smush it all down paint over it and start again. <laughs> but if you do decide to do that, then you'll want to obviously let it dry.
then again, just making little, little patterns as you will, if that's what you like to do. And I think I want to make her eyebrows dark instead of teal. And voila, if you want to um, stamp. Now I stamped the little saying in watercolor also, but you could really make your life a little bit easier and use an ink pad unless you, you know, want to um, somehow smoosh around your words, but I, the ink pad, um, just made it a little bit, you know, more legible. And, um, if you're going to turn it into a greeting card, then I think that's great. It doesn't have to be 100% watercolor, right? <laughs> so voila, you have your little girl in galoshes painted a couple different ways. Obviously when you do this, it always turns out differently. So I hope you had fun or I hope you have fun. <laughs> I had fun. And I hope you learned something. Um, I hope that you get to get makey today because that's the best kind of day. I said, makey. <laughs> anyway, great to see you. And thank you for joining me for day number five of watercolor, World Watercolor Month. And um, I will see you back here tomorrow for day six. Um, same time, same bat channel. <laughs> Have a great day. Thanks for joining me. Let me know if you have any questions. I'm here for a while. Actually, I'm going to scroll back up and see um, who's here. I didn't get to say hi. I said hi to Dana because I saw her come on first. And Georgie, nice to see you guys. Jan, you made it. Linda, good to see you. I haven't seen you for a while. And Juliet, well, if you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I am, I think, going to take half a day off today and my husband and my middle daughter are going to go for a drive and maybe have a meal out. Woohoo! I don't get to do that very often so I'm pretty excited because if any of you know me um, you know that I live in a town that doesn't really have a lot of options for eating out so Yeah, Jan tries. Jan says she wants to try a sunny image like this, Sunny Carvalho, um, for a Christmas image. That would be fun. So try it and share. So if no one has any questions, I'm going to sign off. Of course, you can always leave me questions on um, our Facebook page or, you know, wherever you can find me. I really want to thank you again for joining me today. Um, and I wanted to ask real quick, how are you liking the YouTube format? Do you like it better here? Please chime in. We need to know. I am really loving it. The clarity on the screen is amazing. Um, I can see everyone's comments without having to, um, you know, go to my phone and all that. It's really, really, it's very user friendly on my end. So I hope that you like it. Hi, Tamiko. How are you? Thanks for sharing. Yay. So Georgie said it's great on YouTube. So I'm really happy about that. If anybody has, you know, any um, thoughts about it at all, you know, send me a message or definitely comment because um, I, I, you know, I think that we're going to be doing a lot more over here on YouTube because it, it is just uh, fantastic from our perspective. So anywho, thanks again. I appreciate you all. I love seeing your you up here because it just makes me feel like we're just staying connected and um you know i think that is really what art and creativity is a lot about is connections so anyway have a wonderful day i'll talk to you tomorrow bye